Thank you for joining with us today on our topic of clarity on crucial choices. And today we'll be talking about the gears or components of judgment. The components of judgment. We can make bad decisions, bad judgments. We can make better judgment and we can make very good judgments. Remember in our last chapter, last session, Matthew 13.30 and Malachi 3.18 we found that there were three choices that people could make. They could choose to serve Christ and do right and don't harm others. And if they do that, the judgment would be, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You go to court and they find nothing but truth in you, they're going to free you. The other one is the humanist, the atheist and so forth that reject Jesus in the Bible and don't harm others. They won't serve God. But they really don't go around harming people. And what is the solution there? Jesus said, they're blind leaders of the blind. When blind lead the blind, they will both fall into the ditch. They're not hurting anyone directly, so just leave them alone. If they want to go to hell, let them go to hell. You know, that's their choice. If they want to reject Christ, they have the freedom to do that. And... Uh, God will deal with them. They fall into the ditch. God will bring things in their life to get their attention. They don't need you beating them over the head with a Bible. All right? The third one is a little more complex. These are people that say they follow Jesus, they believe in Jesus, they are Christians, or they reject Jesus in the Bible, but... In rejecting Jesus in the Bible, they say they're good without God. But they do criminal acts that hurt themselves and hurt others. And when you do criminal acts that hurt yourself and hurt others, it doesn't matter if you say you're good without God or you're good with God. You're bad. And you need to be dealt with, according to the Bible... And any wise society by punishment to correct that problem. Now, how are we going to decide if a behavior is evil? How do you make that decision? How do you make that judgment? Jesus said in John 7, 24. Jesus said, judge righteous judgment. See. These people that say, judge not lest you be not judged. Jesus said, you better be making decisions. And you better be making right decisions. Correct decisions. And so, we're going to look at the definition of uh, judge and judgment here in the Bible. And both in your English dictionary, they're the same. To judge is to decide mentally or judicially. To test, to try. So you can find if, some, if a behavior is guilty and should be punished. Or a behavior is innocent and should be set free. Judgment is the decision of right and wrong in a forensic sense. In a scientific method. You get all the facts before you make that judgment. And both our English dictionary and the Bible agree on this. If you're going to make a right judgment, you've got to get all the facts <coughs> So you can determine, literally from facts, if something is right or something is wrong. And you can never use circumstantial evidence in the Bible. Circumstantial evidence is indirect evidence without proof. Like, he can't uh, account for his time. But because he can't account for his time doesn't mean he committed the crime. Well, he was with the people that did commit the crime. Because he's with people that committed a crime doesn't mean he did it. You see... He might have been with people that raped someone, but he didn't rape. And so there's no circumstantial evidence allowed. Deuteronomy 17.6 is very clear. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be examined. And these witnesses have to be examined. You've got to examine the witnesses. And then, if he's worthy of death, or if he's worthy of punishment, if he's worthy of being corrected for his behavior, then... You correct them for their behavior. You got to have two witnesses, not one. So how do we decide if a behavior is evil? We decide it 
by forensic proof that behavior is bringing harm to others or to themselves. Now the humanists and their followers say in the humanist manifesto, they say some very good things and they say some interesting things and uh, in their manifesto, second manifesto, all have a right to birth control. All have a right to abortion. All have a right to divorce. Without offering proof there that there's no harm involved. And what they're saying is abortion can be a source of birth control. And abortion is a right for everyone and divorce is a right for everyone. Well, if it brings harm, how can you say that is a right judgment? Now, also in the Humanist Manifesto 2, Section 6, they say this statement. Short of harming others or compelling them to do likewise, individuals should be permitted to express their sexual appetites and pursue their lifestyles as they desire. Short of hurting others, I submit to you, abortion hurts the child. So how can you say everyone should have a right when someone is getting harmed if you really mean it? That we shouldn't harm others. The baby is paying the dear price of its life. And divorce, of course, kids. Kids are, get, kids are getting the brunt of adults' bad judgment. They pay the price. And uh, then he goes on to say, compelling, compelling, convincing, persuading people to uh, live in a lifestyle, to behave like you behave. And so, not only do they say, short of harming others, they say, short of compelling, uh, promoting, propagating, that lifestyle. And yet they go into public schools and teach homosexuality to kids on our tax money. And they are persuading children you know, in kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade that their lifestyle is correct, confusing and destroying the minds of young people. That is compelling. That's against the humanist manifesto. The same as harming. <clears throat> now, forensic facts prove that evil behavior hurts. In AVERT 2011, statistics on the HIV and the AIDS virus, there are 1.4 million infected in America and 34 million affected globally. 51,000 new infections a year in America, 2.5 million globally. In 2011, there's 21,000 uh, AIDS deaths, um, mostly homosexuals, in America, 1.7 million a year throughout the world. Total deaths in America, 636,000 and 40 million globally. Folks, forensic facts prove that this is an evil behavior, an evil lifestyle, and hurts. So the gears of justice must turn us back to good laws. The gears of justice must turn the humanist back to not harming and not compelling bad lifestyles that hurt others. Our civil leaders in America say, buckle up. You better buckle up. You click it or we'll ticket it. Civil leaders punish violators and say they save an estimated 12,000 lives per year, but they never ticket homosexuals. Civil leaders say you got to use helmets for horses, for bicycles, and motorcycles. That saves 1,800 lives per year, but the homosexuals have no uh, restraints on them at all to save their life. Civil leaders want to take away your gun to save 8,000 lives a year. But they won't take away the homosexual lifestyle and save 26,000 per year in the North America and 1.7 million worldwide. 
Now, 93% of men with AIDS are homosexual or bisexual. Homosexual men account for 63% of syphilis and 75% of the HPV, sexually transmitted disease virus. There were 93,000 men boys raped in 2012. There were 5 million kids abused in 2010. 460 of them were sexually abused. And one third of those sexually abused kids was same sex rape. And so we've got a problem in America. The forensic facts shows us that this behavior is hurting people. We spend $5 billion a year in medical costs to treat. HIV, AIDS, and sexually transmitted diseases, we send another five million treating it worldwide. The public schools teach their agenda paid for by our tax dollars, so it's costing us taxes. And I submit to you, we need a sex preventative maintenance program like the helmets and the guns and all the rest. I get these sources from... Uh, Center of Disease Control, the Justice Department, Associated Press, Avert, Amphire, and these reliable sources. Humanists attack and ban Jesus in the Bible without proof that the Bible and Jesus hurts anybody. And that's not forensic judgment. Humanist, your manifesto says you are for good laws and lifestyles that don't hurt others. And why don't you join Bible followers to pass laws protecting Americans and innocent kids from harmful homosexuality, transsexual, and transvestite lifestyles. Let's put them back in the closet, not on public display. And what is the harm in persuading people to marry, then have sex, one woman, one man, for life, and raise kids morally? Where is the harm in that? If humanists and followers don't support good laws, they're blind leaders of the blind. They're hypocrites because they say and do not. You can say you're good without God. But if you are living a harmful lifestyle and promoting a harmful lifestyle, you are a hypocrite. The same with followers of Jesus in the Bible. So they believe in Jesus. So they believe in the Bible. They don't stand up for, for, for preventing deaths and harmful behavior traits that hurt the innocent people, especially children in America. What good is your belief in Jesus? And blind homosexuals, which are 1.6% of the population, not 10%, according to Center for Disease Control, just this year, July of 2014. They won't admit the harm. They won't admit that they were not born that way. They won't admit that it was a choice. They won't admit that there's no homosexual animals. They won't admit that they are liars. And the fact is, naive Americans accept and promote homosexual lies, legalizing preventable diseases, deaths, and poisoning the minds of our innocent students. And folks, you've been presented with alarming flurries and facts today. Now you must make the decision to make a right judgment. The decision is yours.